I want you to think for a moment about a time in your life when things went really wrong, and I mean badly wrong, and you couldn't hide it, you couldn't escape from it, people knew about it. It might have been you studied for an exam and you failed, or you didn't study for it and you failed. You might have gone for a job interview and you didn't get it, or for a promotion, or you took a risk, a business risk, and you lost out, or maybe it was more personal. Maybe it was a friendship that went sour, or maybe it was a relationship where you cared about somebody, but that it broke down. Just for a moment, think about what was your first response? What was the first thing you thought or the first thing you did when you experienced this disappointment or this failure? So if you have that, hold on to it, because we're going to be coming back to it. If your upbringing has been anything like mine, from very young age, directly, indirectly, consciously, subconsciously, we've received messages from popular culture and from society that say that we should be getting better and better at things all the time, that life should really be an exponential success curve. I remember from a young age starting school, the pressure is on. Be intelligent, become more intelligent, become popular, become more popular, learn about how to make friends and be a cool person. Be beautiful, cultivate your beauty, and if you're not born with it, go to the gym, work out, get in shape. Go get money, aim for money, acquire more, because we think that this is going to make us happy, that this is what real success is. But we don't really have a culture that helps us to know how do we process when we fall off this exponential success curve, or when we don't even get started in the first place. We don't have a culture that teaches us to fail well, or that even questions this mentality and this approach. When I look at talent shows on TV, when I look at blockbuster films or the occasional romantic comedy, it's the same kind of message. The girl gets the guy, the guy makes the money, the bunch of teenagers go and become international superstars. And it does happen sometimes, but to very, very few people. And certainly in my experience, from my own life, and from my work as a leadership coach, I see very, very few people who live a life like this. So what do we do when we fail, when we're disappointed, when things go wrong? Back to you. What did you do at that difficult time in your life? Again, from my own experience, from chatting to friends and mentors, and just seeing people fail a lot, there seems to be three general approaches we have to failure. The first is we stay down. We're so shocked, we're so hurt, we just think, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get up again. It's too painful, it's too difficult. The second is we crawl our way back up and we return to the level that we were at before, but we don't take any more risks and we live in control and a little bit of fear. And the third, what I see quite few numbers of people doing, is we learn, and we come back up and we grow. People who grow and who keep on learning, they view failure as normal. What I like to call the, the learning cycle is what kicks in with them, and I'm going to come back to that in a few moments. But let's for a moment think of these three positions. So when you stay down, we stay down because we want to be protected. We want to be wrapped up in cotton wool, and we don't want to experience that kind of pain and disappointment again. Somebody has broken our heart, broken our trust. We've taken a risk, and it was really difficult. And we think, I will never, I will never allow this to happen to me again. And we take a conscious or an unconscious vow saying that this will not happen. But unfortunately, we don't leave ourselves open to good opportunities that can come in the future. And in trying to minimize pain, we can actually cause longer-term pain, because we shut down a part of our lives. The second response is to return. We're shocked, but we get back up eventually. We crawl our way back up. We face it again, but in a different way. We now want control. And we look like we've got things in control, but we're actually fearful. When it comes to jobs, I know so many people who, they started a job, they were very comfortable at the start, and then after a while, they're frustrated. But they don't have a history of taking risks and of failing, and they're really worried. They don't want to be stretched beyond their comfort zone. So they get frustrated and stressed and worried and fearful, and they can't move. It's the same in, in friendships. How many of us are still friends with people we knew when we were young from growing up, but we're not really that friendly with them. We don't really inspire and encourage each other. It's just someone we know. Same with romantic relationships. How many of us have been in the past or currently are, potentially, in relationships where it's good, it's nice. We may want to move out, but we're a little bit scared because what what if I don't get something like this again? And then the third response. Failure's okay, it's normal. 
let's go for it, let's grow, let's keep on moving on. And those of us who get to this point in different parts of our lives, we go through the learning cycle. The learning cycle, the learning cycle has four parts. The first is you try, you try at something. And the second is you fail, because for most of us, we don't get things perfect first time around. And then this is the pivotal moment. When we're failing, we decide we're going to learn. And it might take quite a while. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories in a minute from my own experience of this. And then eventually we grow. And this cycle can be repeated over and over again. As our very own Samuel Beckett is quoted as saying, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. In reality, I think success or growth, whatever you want to call it, looks a little bit like this. You try, you fail. You try again. You might even fail more. But you keep on trying and failing and learning and growing. This has certainly been my experience so many times, and I have so many embarrassing stories I could tell you. I'm just going to stick to that kind of semi-embarrassing stories. Just over 10 years ago, I finished college, and uh, I was out a year, and I got my first kind of big job. And I got a job as a management consultant, and my family, my friends were proud and excited, and my college tutors thought this was great. And it started off, and I was going in, and I soon realized my social life was gone, and I couldn't play football anymore, and I was working long hours, and I was traveling and going around. But that's to be expected, that's fine. That's, that's a career, that's what happens. And I was meant to be working with organizations to align their strategy with their people and working with people, but the projects I was getting were really not those projects at all. And after a few months, I sat down exhausted with my manager, and I said, look, this really isn't what I'd signed up to. And as we chatted it through, I realized in the foreseeable future, I wasn't going to get the kind of projects and the kind of work that I wanted to do, that I had joined to do. So after a few more months of struggling and stressing about it, I left. And I was embarrassed in public. I couldn't hide it. I felt a little bit relieved, let's be honest. But I didn't really know what to do with it. And I didn't really want to talk about it to other people. And it's only in the last few years when I set up my own consulting and coaching business that I started to learn some of those lessons that I learned from that experience of failure. Now that's kind of an easy example because that's a failure where you can learn and grow. But we all know there's plenty of failures and disappointments where we can't change it. Where the only thing we can change is the way we view the situation and we can reframe it. One of the biggest heartbreaks of my life happened a couple of years after I left that job. So from the age of five, I wanted to be a pilot. My uncle used to fly in the Air Corps here. I used to go sit in the jets with him, go to his air shows, hang out with the officers, be in the helicopters. And as a teenager, I was addicted to aviation. I collected magazines every week for four years, worked my summers in the airport. And I was like mid-20s, and I thought, let's just go for it. Let's just get stuck in. Got all my savings together, did some exams, got into a top flight school in Spain, had an interview for a company, and they said, Patrick, just send us on your medical. I was like, yeah, sure, I've got better than 20-20 vision, I've always known that, no worries. Did my medical, on the day I found out I was colorblind. And I never knew, which is apparently an issue with the color green and white when you're flying fast at night. But I never knew. And it took me three years of staying down and not knowing how to cope with it, because this was my, my future, my excitement, where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. And it's in these times of failure when we really find out about ourselves, about our character, and about how we want to grow and how we want to to develop as a person. So what do we do? What happens when we're on the down curve and it's messy, it's difficult, and it's painful? There's two things that I think are important. First is practices, second is people. Practices, how do you eat? How do you sleep? What do you read? What TED talks do you watch? Who are your friends? What are your spiritual practices? Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? Do you pray? What are the routines that you need to get a sense of energy, vitality, and life? They're really important. I could talk about them all day, but I won't. The second one is people. Basic rule of thumb, if somebody gives you energy, if somebody loves you, accepts you, supports you, spend time with these kind of people, invest in their lives. If somebody sucks the life and the energy out of you, Somebody's difficult to be around, particularly when you're failing and upset, try to stay away from those kind of people. And there's one group of people that I'd like to focus on who are really important if we want to learn and grow and go through that learning cycle. And those people are mentors. 
And the, the word mentor comes from classical antiquity. There's a guy called Odysseus, and he went off to fight the Trojan War. And he had a son called Telemachus. And before he left his kingdom, he left his son under the care of a guardian. And this guardian was to instruct him, to guide him, to support him, to encourage him from being a boy and moving on into being an adult. And that man's name was Mentor. And that's where we get the term from. The difference between a role model and a mentor is that a role model is somebody who's ahead of us. They may be alive, they may be dead, they may live down the street, or we may only follow them on, online. But we don't know them personally, they don't know us personally. They can still be very inspiring to us, though. But a mentor is different. A mentor is somebody who comes and meets us where we're at. I've had some really good mentors. I've had some not so really good mentors. And here's what I've learned from mentoring and mentors. There's three really good characteristics of, a, of an excellent mentor. Firstly, they're open as people. They're open to possibilities, to ideas. They see the world as an expansive, exciting, curious place. They're also comfortable. They're comfortable in their own skin. They're comfortable being their own person. And as a result of that, they don't have a plan for your life. They're not trying to manipulate you. They're not trying to control you. They want you to be comfortable in your skin. The second trait that they have or characteristic is that they're more, more interested in what's going on internally than externally. Mentors understand that what happens inside of you and how your character develops, that, that will one day be mirrored outside of you. So they don't really focus on how much money you're making or how flash and how cool you look or how popular you are. They want to know who you are and to allow you to develop that. And finally, they tend to be able to celebrate the rise, but also the fall, and they'll sit with you on the fall, the disappointment, the heartbreak, the hurt. What a mentor really does is they bring you through the learning cycle again and again until you become very used to it, of trying and failing and learning and growing. And mentors are people who, in that as aspect of your life, they've gone ahead of you, they know a little bit more of you, but they're humble about it. They realize they don't have all the answers, but they're kind of a support and an encouragement. One of my favorite role models, when he talks about mentors, he uses the, the image of a fire. He says that a mentor is like a fire because they warm us, they bring us close, and we wanna, we wanna get close to them. But at times a fire can burn. But when a mentor brings a little bit of burn, we trust them because we know that they have our greatest, our greatest good in mind. So to finish with a challenge, back to you. The area in your life that you have failed in in the past, or an area that you are currently failing in, disappointed in, where you've stayed down, or where you're controlling and desperately trying to control, but you'd really like to change. What is that area? Secondly, do you know of a person who could be a mentor to you in that part of your life? Someone who's gone ahead of you, but who has some of these characteristics. They can be generative. They can give of themselves, and they can encourage you. There's somebody who you'd like to spend some time with. And finally, go and ask them. Even this year, I went and asked somebody who I really respected, would he be my mentor in a professional capacity? And I was really nervous. I was really scared. It's kind of a weird conversation over coffee. Going, will you kind of mentor me? But he was so gracious, and his response was so excellent. And I just, it was confirmed that he had those characteristics. So to finish, embrace your failure and go get a mentor. Thank you.